guys, it's Leanne. This is part three of what my me and Caden are doing, which is our uh, UK versus USA or USA versus UK. And this one is about our active leavers. So let me just take all my keys out of my pockets. Miss receipt. I've been shopping and stuff. And I look get ready. Anyway, so um, I can't remember what I talked up to. I know I was talking up to the pregnancy, so I'll kind of just go from what happened so obviously I went into hospital with like the high blood pressure and stuff and then they sent me home on the Friday the Friday night I started to have my first lot of twinges and I told mum that I could feel them the Saturday morning I lost my mucus plug and the contractions were pretty much the same they never really changed out through like the whole entire labour they were pretty much the same like strength and whatever you want to call them um, <coughs> um, Sunday night come and I hadn't had no sleep really I was quite tired and they were the same and mum said there's something not right you should have you're like because mum was timing them she was like you should be the baby should be here by now like seriously this is like three days so mum took me to the hospital up to the, the ward and obviously rang them and said that what was going on. Um, they went up there and checked me and said that I wasn't dilated at all um, and that she didn't understand why I was having contractions and they weren't doing a lot. So she sent me home because she strapped me up and then she sent me home. Um, Monday evening, I uh, yet yeah, Sunday night, I didn't have no sleep at all. Um, Monday evening, mum took me back to the hospital again because I was just so tired. And mum was just thinking, if kept saying, you know, you're not gonna be able to push the baby out if you're this tired. Like you're too tired. And I kept trying to sleep, and it just wasn't happening. I was just so tired. So mum took me back in. Oh yeah, I gotta tell you, I didn't poo for the whole time of this. By the way, I'm just like, I'm not gonna, you know. So you know, no poop come out of me from like the Friday so I was really badly like <laughs> and yeah like really bad and mum had gone to the pharmacy and got a load of stuff that obviously I could take because I was pregnant and it didn't work um so Monday mum took me to the hospital and obviously I said I'm tired I haven't you know I haven't slept and I can't go poop <laughs> so they gave me a depository what was that what they're called yeah um and she gave me i don't know what she gave me just like this injection in my leg and i can't remember what it was not to like numb the pain just so i could get some sleep because i was tired um and i can remember falling asleep and the lady was there mum was in the room with me and obviously she had checked, had checked me she had checked me by the way before this and she said that I was one centimeter which obviously isn't a lot um and i was obviously strapped up to the monitor the whole time i was there and when i fell asleep apparently my contractions were like three minutes apart the whole time and she was just, like the woman just didn't get it really like they were they were a bit confused about what was going on so was i and then i can remember waking up from like an hour and a half sleep and it was like heaven i woke up and i just felt so much better that like Whatever she gave me, I don't even remember what it was, but it was amazing. It, that that sleep was just, ah, oh, it was brilliant. And because I had that injection, they obviously weren't allowed to send me home. So um, after me had me cup of tea, because the lady made me a cup of tea, they sent me down to what's called Fern Ward, which is where I was at when I had like the preeclampsia and people were they've gone into early labour and whatnot, they always go to Fern Ward unless it progresses and they go up to the labour ward. So I sat down in Fern Ward and I went, um, and this is 10 9, 10 o'clock at night, obviously mum had gone home and I had, you know, a couple little bits of me but not a lot, like just enough for that night and um, I had got to sleep and I had you know I was I had nice sleep and there was this like women obviously in labour not in and I didn't get it they were making so much noise and I was just as much like you know doing what they were because 
you can't go up to labour ward unless you're between four and five centimetres. So I was just as much dilated as these people and they were whining and annoying me and walking past with their stupid tense machine on, walking up and down. Obviously didn't do much because a couple of them left when they went up and I can remember the woman come in to take my blood, uh, take my blood pressure and to check the baby again and while she was there she checked me and she went, you're four centimetres. I was like, yes. And so this is like two o'clock in the morning, and I got to walk up to Labour Ward. Now that walk up to Labour Ward was like, I'm gonna have a baby. <sighs> Labour Ward, it was brilliant. Like Labour Ward, it was like I'm actually far enough gone now to go up to Labour Ward. <laughs> so I got up there, and my midwife was Polish, Polish, Polish midwife, and she pissed me off big time. She kept having the radio on, and I kept telling her to turn the radio off. Then she would turn it back on, and she pissed me off. And then I was obviously having contractions, and she was like, have your gas and air. I was like, I don't want my goddamn gas and air. I don't want gas and air. <laughs> I don't want fucking gas and air. She kept, like, shoving this tube in front of my face, and I was this close to lamping her. And it got to about five o'clock, five, six, five, half, five, half, five. And she said, you know, you're dilating. You, you need to, like, ring somebody to come in with you she said because once your waters go you know it goes fast and you're going to have this baby so she made me ring my mum and mum brought all the bags in and stuff to have the baby and it's about six o'clock in the morning and it must have been about six o'clock in the morning mum got there six seven mum got there and from that to having their heads it was kind of a blur really i don't remember a lot because the contractions got a little bit stronger they were very close together they were doing jack shit. Um, I can't remember a lot. I can remember going on the bathroom ball and them trying to make me move around, go on the bathroom ball, and oh my god, you know, it didn't do much. She then popped my waters, didn't do much. She was trying to make go on the bathroom ball um, after my water popped to move around, obviously, like, trying to get the baby out didn't do nothing um and then this I carried on all day because I think we're on Tuesday now aren't we yeah all day and I can remember Wednesday morning about three o'clock in the morning that was from Friday to Wednesday I can remember sitting there and I can remember just crying I turned around and said to the doctors, I was like, you need to give me a C-section. This baby's not coming out. I've been doing this since Friday. Nothing is happening. So they gave me um, Pitocin to try and speed the baby up. And I can remember because the doctor come in. And oh my God, he was the biggest black man I've ever seen in my life. He was huge. And he would be a black man. And I was like, oh my God. And he like shoved his fingers in my woohoo. And I was like, oh my God. But, tell you what, that bloke put that drip in straight off in my hand as well. I didn't even feel it. Do you know what? I doubt you're going to be able to see it. Actually, I don't think you will. But right near my freckle, which is about here, about half a centimetre up, there's a little white dot. And that is where my drip was. So that's my little scar for my drip from having Ed. Um, <laughs> and he got it, you know, he got it in. Um... Not that long after that, Ed started to get a bit panicky. Um, his heart kept dropping and stuff. And he wasn't very happy. And at the same time, my blood pressure was through the roof. Um, Ed didn't like the Pitocin. Every time it dropped, Ed hated it. So they stopped the Pitocin to try and hope that it would naturally speed me up anyway. And it didn't do much. Um, but because my blood pressure was so high, like I was doing fine, you know, I was all, I, I was doing good to be honest, like I was coping with the pain well, I wasn't moaning, I wasn't crying, I was still talking, kind of drowsy, but you know, but they had to give me epidural to lower my blood pressure because apparently epidurals lower your blood pressure because it was really, really, really high. And like I remember the person coming in to give me my epidural. And I had the trained woman, then I had the trainee man. And I sat there with a pillow here like this. And the only time I had gas and air was when they were, because I hate needles, was when they were putting it in. I was just holding it like that. And I had it on my mouth. 
and I was having contractions and obviously they're telling you to try and keep still because they're trying to put the epidural in so you're like this and um, oh my god six attempts to get that epidural in my back the bloke tried it five times and I could feel him scrape my vertebra or whatever it's called I could I could feel it and it didn't hurt because I was having contractions at the same time it wasn't too bad but my god was I in pain like like I the, the nurse that was in front of me that obviously was there to comfort me I guess is what you would say and obviously mum was there and like mum's never had an epidural well actually no that's a lie she has had an epidural she had one when she broke her leg but you know, like when you're in labour and you're like, I used to love to rock and sit on the toilet when I was in labour. Oh, sitting on the toilet backwards, like facing the tank, but you're like this on the. Oh, that is the most comfortable position if you ever have a baby. That is so comfortable to be in. Um, and the woman turned around and said to my mum, like obviously, my mum told me afterwards that women are normally screaming right now because it's quite a painful thing having it put into your back, and women are normally in pain. And my mum was just like, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> like, you know, I hadn't moaned for like five days. Well, no, not it wasn't five days of labour, was it? It was what? Oh, yeah, five days of labour. Five days of labour. Well, there you go. Um, you know, and I hadn't moaned for it. I only really cried once. You know, I was in pain. It weren't that bad, it was a shit ass labour, but you know, it wasn't bad. Um, but yeah, eventually the woman took over and did it, got in straight away, and it kind of it killed the the um, contractions a bit, really, in both sense. Um, Ed had completely, his heart rate had gone down like to shit. Um, they put a monitor of one of the ones on the head, and she couldn't find it on that. Um, and this was probably half four in the afternoon and it would come and go and come and go and it weren't too good and I think it was about half six they come in with a form they told me to sign this form because I was going to go and have a c-section and I can kind of remember signing this form because obviously mum would have to sign it for me if I couldn't sign it they literally just shove it in your face and you have to sign that form it doesn't matter whether you just put a line across it that's you signing it so if they fuck up your c-section you can't sue them <laughs> well apparently you know so I can remember going in this is where it gets a bit gross so if you give a panic about a c-section don't really watch this story it's a very long story but yeah I can remember going in and they asking me to try and shuffle onto the other trolley onto the other on the table I just see sec I had like an epidural oh, I couldn't shuffle like so I tried to shuffle and they ended up having to help me I remember lying down and then putting all the, the sheet up and my mum was in there and had all her ghetto on and I can remember them running some ice through me and asking me whether I could feel it and I said yeah it feels cold and he said yeah that's okay and he put it down my legs and whatever and I could feel it like I told them I could feel it and then they started cutting and I screamed really loud. It was the most pain I'd ever felt in my life. It was a horrible, sharp, stabbing, dragging sensation. And oh my god, did I scream really bad. So they stopped. The anaesthetist told them to stop and they upped my epidural. Probably in a couple of minutes and started again. And I screamed again. It hadn't taken. They must have got it in the wrong place or whatever they'd done. But oh my god, it was the most pain I'd ever felt in my life. And it was horrid and I, it was scary and I hated it. And then my mum was shouting at him going, you need to put her to sleep. You need to put it like literally scream at their niece to taste. She's like, she can feel it. She can feel it. That was the last thing. One of the last things I can remember. Because next thing I can remember there was this mask over my face. And it not being quite on my mouth, it was like that. And he literally grabbed this thing, chucked, I can remember the taste of it was, it's vile. It's a horrible tasting gas. And then I was asleep. 
and I can remember kind of waking up and saying, I don't remember doing this, but Mum reckoned that I kept saying, oh, where have off I got boy or girl? And Mum kept saying he's a little boy, £7.4. He got little Edward. Oh, I'm going to start crying because it's horrible. And like, apparently I just kept saying it over and over and over again. And apparently I had a male care assistant afterwards and he come to see me just not that long after like I had woken up properly and gone back up to the proper ward and he said apparently I was the funniest person he's ever met coming out of Alistair <laughs> I was there telling jokes and oh it was funny because the whole time like even when I was drowsy the whole time my mum was it, my mum was just laughing at me because I was so tired I kept telling mum I need to get my sister up for school she's gonna be late for school and she was in college I kept, my mum kept saying, what are you doing? I said, I'm stroking the dog. And I kept thinking there was crows flying around the room and it was really weird. Um, so yeah, Ed was obviously born. And this is not what I know, this is, this is what obviously mum's told me. When I was in there having my C-section, um, they had called for a crash trolley. So obviously mum thought it was me and it wasn't also the baby. And it took them 45 minutes to resuscitate him. And eventually they obviously took him down and took him to the NICU. And um, mum went to go and see him about 10 o'clock at night. And obviously my dad and my sister had come in to come and see me. And mum had showed dad a picture of the baby and obviously stuff like that. And mum, I had bought a present for my sister. Like, you know what you do when you have a second child and you buy a present for the, the first child or from the baby? I bought my sister a little necklace that said Annie on it from the baby, like. So, and my sister was really upset because she wanted to come in the delivery room with me. And my mum kept saying to her, no, you're not allowed to go in. Because, you know, she was only 16. Well, 15. 15. She hadn't quite turned 16. Um, and, you know... Mum's glad she didn't go in because it wasn't a nice... Mum said it was one of the worst experiences she's ever had. And that she would never, ever, if I had any more kids, she's not coming with me. To think that if I ever tried to have a natural, to go back all the way through that again, just to end up being shot down and having to go and rush into C, have a C-section again. Um, but yeah, half twelve at night I finally got to meet him and he was in a little incubator and he was all cute and wired up and the lady took his hat off for me to go and see his hair and it, oh it was brilliant. Um, but I'm not sure how much far I'm allowed to talk about this but yeah, basically um, the reason for me having a c-section is my pelvis doesn't open up. So. If I have any more kids in the future, I'm most likely to have a C-section unless I have a really asshole of a consultant who tells me that I do need to try and have a natural. But my apparently my pelvis doesn't open up. And obviously you've seen Edward's head. It's not that small. So that was not going to come out my hoo-ha. Um, so yeah, and I got obviously, I forgot to tell you that I got stuck at 7 centimetres. So although I got up to like the 4 and then I made it up to like the 6 as far as I got was seven and he wasn't going to come out at seven because he was stuck um but thank you for watching this very long winded thing it's like a long one but thank you for watching like and subscribe and yay British birth story and all that oh my god I keep doing that bye